Alright, I decided I would start the tour with the program itself because there's a lot going on. Uh, the Let's see. Uh, the first column here will sort of change your view of the image to one that just emphasizes the, I, what I'm guess I'm, I'm going to call them channels, okay? So if you wanted to, well, the red, green, blue, and alpha ones work differently, okay? So if I wanted to, I believe, what, well, let's see what this does. Okay, yeah, so that turns off the red channel. This turns off the green channel. This turns off the blue channel. This turns off the alpha channel. So if I wanted to just see the red channel, I could do that. Uh, alpha being on all the time kind of makes sense. If I wanted to just see the green channel, I could do that. And then if I wanted to just see the blue channel, I could do that. Uh, and then if I want to see, it works slightly differently for this. If I want to see the amount of score for one of the various scores we're going to look at, let's say V1 for now. Uh, black indicates a score of zero, and then some degree of green indicates a score of uh, not zero. It's 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 always from zero to two fifty five. And then yeah, okay. So here's the next thing I'm going to show you. When I when I click down, it brings up this little info panel which tells me the the red, green, blue, alpha, and the various scores of all the pixels. Now that doesn't make any sense when you're in this view, actually you should probably, so this actually tells you the scores and all the details of the regular pixels. This will tell you that information for the like changed pixels, which are nothing but green. As you can see, this particular pixel is green 122. Alpha is uh, fully opaque at 255, of course. Uh, and then here's the various scores for for something that's you know 122 green it's not actually telling you the score for the original pixel which is what you see here so that's like a little quirk okay um over at the far right is actually the ordered list for score v1 of all the emojis that i have loaded into this thing which i believe is all 1500 or so microsoft teams emojis they should all be here as you know, I'm sure, yeah, just just freeze frame the video and I'm sure you'll be able to see and verify and count that they're all there. <laughs> um, and then as as we go along, I can sort of do, I can resort the list of emojis by pressing these buttons, resorting them according to the various uh, scoring methods that we're going to go over. Naturally, if I click this button, it's not going to do anything because we're already looking at score V1's uh, order. And then, and then finally is these test buttons. What these do is they generate what I'm going to call a test image, which does actually take a few seconds. Now, what you're looking at is only part of the image. It's actually it's longer in, uh, horizontally. We're seeing the leftmost part of this image which will stretch the, to the right a little bit and we can actually uh, oh well so we, we can do this info panel thing once again which is going to be pretty informative and then we can also scroll the image uh, scrolling down we'll be scrolling it to the right and then I can scroll back like so okay and what this test image is is uh, every possible color all 16 million or so of them uh, ordered based off of whatever scoring method you're looking at. So for test V1, of course, this is ordered based off of score V1. Okay, so that's the tour of the app done. Now let me let me pop over to the code briefly. Uh, I'm not going to bother showing you all this code. There's, you know, again, you can <laughs> again, you can stop and pause to look at all the code if you care to. Uh, you can't do that. I don't recommend it. So there's like a thousand lines. It's not like the biggest program ever. Um, frick, and I lost my place. So can I just like, give me a second. Where's the freaking scoring method? It's not up here. These are all the buttons. Where's the greenness score? Okay. 
I've gotten lost in my own code. Here we are. Here's all the various green discords. All right. So as not to overwhelm anyone, like if you're actually interested in this, I'm going to try to explain uh, what I recall was the original intentions of each of the different scoring methods, and hopefully that will be informative. Okay. So I tried to do the quote-unquote dumbest scoring method first, although really a lot of these are going to be uh, very dumb in retrospect. That's kind of the point, I guess, of multiple iterations. So all this is, is saying, again, pixels, the, the score that we're trying to generate is per pixel, and it's going to be a number from 0 to 255, where 255 indicates uh, maximum greenness. And so score v1, what it does is it just returns the green part of the pixel and then multiplied by what I'm calling the opacity ratio, which just says, you know, if it's if you can if it's 50% transparent, then you multiply the score by 50%. Basically, the opacity ratio is going to be the same in in every single scoring method, because that was I think the sensible way to handle opacity. Generally, there's not transparent. Well, there's there's definitely partially visible pixels, but there's like very few of them in most of these emojis, these images. So we kind of don't have to care about it. It's just like a quick and easy solution that that also seems like a valid thing to do. Um, but yeah, so basically, I'm just, so I'm pretty much just going to be ignoring the opacity from now on, and I'll just say. What this score does is it returns the green part of the of each pixel as the the greenest score and uh let's not look at the test image let's i guess look at um an emoji or two can i normally you should be able to click these and i guess uh my browser doesn't feel like doing that right now what, uh, what's happening? Hold on. I love technical issues. Oh, my, okay, cool. My uh, server, quote unquote, is like not running. What? That's not what I meant to do. I don't want to spoil anything, which is why I'm not showing the in the menu. Okay. All right, so here we are, once again. And uh, I neglected to mention that you can click on these various emojis and you can get like the full scale version of them. And when you have the full the quote unquote full scale version of them, I, I call it moving it into the work area. Then you can like click and drag over it and see all this stuff. And now it's like running at a low frame rate because my browser doesn't decide, you know, decide it's going to have a tantrum for the moment, but that's fine. We will carry on. The point is V1 doesn't work because the color white is, um, if it's pure white, what it is is 255, 255, 255. Uh, basically all the components of each pixel are turned on. And that will register as fully green if, if you're looking at pure white. And obviously, white is not green. That's, I guess, maybe that's, the, it's an assumption. Maybe it's not obvious. But that's, that's an axiom I'm going to go forward with. White is not green. So if we believe that that's the case, then actually this, uh, this ordering is, is terrible. Here's, you know, we've got all these emojis in really high positions that don't look remotely green. And that's why V1 is, is not very good. So the next thing that I did for V2 was let's do, let's, let's represent the score as a uh, green divided by the sum of everything else. So the, uh, it's basically the percentage of green. If if you count if you count up uh, how bright each red green or blue is, make that a number, and then you say, well, whatever percentage of the brightness is coming from green, that's the greenness of it. 
which seems like a sensible enough thing. Uh, and then I also decided, I guess, that black is is not uh, is not green. Black is zero green. I decided that because um, because everything sum could be zero, and then I'd be dividing by zero. So I had to decide it one way or another, of course. And I know that black is not green. I get that there's another assumption. I'm assuming that both white and black are not green. Uh, so that that's baked into this V2 thing. Okay, so let's see if it's going to let me do a resort here. Yes, it will. All right, so uh, honestly, I would, I would, I'm of the opinion that this is great news. Um, there's green things at the top of our list of emojis, right? That's fantastic news. Oh yeah, and then so like we could click score v v two to see the greenness of these particular emojis. Obviously, very green. Score V1, also, you know, pretty green. Um, but then, yeah, so you look at, if you look at score V2, score V2 says that the white part of this check mark is, uh, is actually a little bit green. It says it's 80, 80, 82 green. But for score V1, score V1 said it was 200 green uh, or more. So that's, that's a significant improvement, right? Okay. And then I believe basic basically for a lot of these, my my iteration method is to sort is to look through the list of emojis and identify, you know, find whatever the first problem is and try to fix that. So the first egregious problem I would point out here is that like, well, this doesn't seem very green. And it turns out that it's it's saying this blue stuff is actually like significantly green. Um, the white is actually still pretty green somehow. Yeah, and uh, and I guess that's because like white is still pretty green, right? I guess I guess white would be one third green, right? White would still be one third green, and since there's just all this brightness, there's all these bright emojis, like this is a very bright emoji, right? Um, then, uh, then they're gonna get rated really highly. And that's like, it's, we've down ranked white a little bit, but not as much as we would like to. And also we've got a problem with yellow. Yellow is gonna be a sort of a long lasting problem. We'll see how we deal with that. Okay, so, <clears throat> So V2, oh, and I, I should at least show the test image for it because it's, it's going to be interesting, I think, to see how these test images develop over time. There we go. So here's the test image for V2. Um, what these indicate is probably a little bit abstract, honestly, but... Um, like it's much less concrete to, to like draw conclusions from it, but I think it's still interesting and can be informative sometimes. Yeah. Um, and my browser does not want to cooperate right now. So it's like being a bit weird on the scrolling. It's slow, we're slowly scrolling to the right. And we get these interesting little artifacts in there. Man, I wish my browser would like cooperate with me right now. That'd be cool. Hold on one second, maybe I can fix it. All right, Chrome, we're going to end your task. Yep, I just closed. I don't know why there were 15 Chrome processes, but uh, you know, Chrome's gonna do Chrome. Why are there like 17 Chrome processes? Oh, is it each of each of my uh, plugins are uh, are um, each of my plugins are separate Chrome processes? I guess well, that's weird. Well, I've rest I've restarted Chrome like eight times, so you know maybe it'll work now. I don't know. Anyways, let's talk about version three. So version three, 
All right, what did I do here? Okay, so basically I believe I said, um, here is the, what I'm gonna call the negation of red. Okay, the, like the max possible, like redness in a sense is indicated by this value of red from zero to 255. If you take the max possible value and subtract it, you sort of get like negative red or not redness. So greenness here is defined as not redness plus not blueness plus greenness. Uh, and then you divide by three to normalize it. So that, I mean, that seems like a reasonable guess, right? We, we have too much, we have too much red and blue we're seeing. And so we wanna, we wanna penalize the existence of that, right? So that seems like, a, like a, something that could work, of course. Okay, and this is loading, and uh, that error message is exactly what we expect to see. Okay, so we're fine. Um, and it's not running really slowly. Yeah, so uh, here's the, so this is V3. Here's the sorted list of emojis for V3. We have some green stuff, but immediately this is concerning, right? What is this doing here? How is this rated so highly? <laughs> uh, and it turns out that, um, well, if you have nothing, if you have like almost no red and almost no blue, well, that's actually a really highly high scoring thing. Um, so that was sort of a mistake, right? Uh, greenness is still valued, but the the not redness and not blueness just kind of gives a lot of points to black. Um, V1 kind of had this problem, V2, I mean, all of them kind of had this problem a little bit, but it's really bad for V3. Like, wow, V3 just loves these. Um, that checkbox is like scored very similarly to that checkbox. So that's a huge problem. White is, I guess, uh, lower scored lower a little bit right the the white part of this windmill I guess like a true white like the clouds emote the fog emoji and all the other stuff is still uh, scored pretty low on average that's horrifying looking uh, so v3 is really not where it's at let's let's take a look at that test image if it wants to load for me does this work with it no it doesn't I'm gonna have to, <clears throat> I didn't think it would work, but okay, yeah. So here's what V3 looks like. And this actually looks like a reasonably smooth transition in greenness, right? But then we have like the blacks in here and it's just, uh, it's not green. And then we've got a lot of blue, a lot of yellow. It's, um, I don't know. I don't, again, I'm not 100% sure how to interpret this, but it's not great. Definitely not great. V4. V4, the idea is this was rewarding, uh, not re this concept of not redness was would reward, uh, you know, zero red a lot. Right? So let's try a slightly different concept. Let's just compare the greenness to the other colors. And say, if there's a lot, of, a lot of green, and there's more green than blue, and there's more green than red, then surely that indicates that the, that the image is green, right? Uh, and again, we have to do this like, wait, wait, wait. Oh yeah, and this I guess is just a, uh, let's see, if greenness is less than zero, if greenness is less than zero. Right, because because it's possible that this ends up with like a really big negative value. So negative values of greenness, we just say that that's zero. Yeah, that's a sensible call to make. Okay, so let's see what V4 is about. Okay, V4.
Does it just not have the ability? That's weird. Well, now it's working. Huh. I think that's a bug in the code. Whatever. All right, so V4. Wow, look at all these green things. And this is this is called Green Apple. Uh, does that show up for you, by the way? Oh, no. Huh, that's disappointing. Uh, there's like a little tool tip that pops up when I mouse over these things. But, whatever. Um, yeah, so the first concerning thing is this yellow square. I uh, yellow is not green. Okay, so here's here's the next assumption we've made we've we're making now. Yellow is not green, and uh, maybe maybe I can see an indication as to why this is being scored so high. Um, okay, so I guess with this is uh, yellow has the characteristic that there's a lot of green. And there's a lot more green than blue. So that's like two thirds. And the fact that there's more red than green or that there's a lot of red, is like maybe not that important. We're getting two thirds of the way to green and that's still gonna be scored pretty highly, right? Yeah, V4 says that this is a lot of green. Uh, why is the blue sky green? That looks like we still have a slight issue. Oh, this is the reverse of the problem. If we have this, because uh, this sky actually turns out to be like teal, green and blue together. So similar to yellow with this, uh, with this teal color, you know, you do the green minus red and that still gives you two thirds. Yeah, so that makes sense. So I'm guessing same story here. Yeah, okay, so that explains that. Yeah, so, you know, it gets decent marks for getting maybe the first uh, 10 or so, right? But um, still not great. Let's look at the test image. Okay, pretty similar looking to V3. It doesn't do like the immediate to black thing. And then we get these nice little uh, diamond shape pattern thing going on. That's cute. All right, how about V5? Are we going to figure it out finally with V5? Spoiler alert, there's five more metrics after this. Okay, so, um, okay, this is interesting. I said, <laughs> I'm like, no, really, I don't want any red and I don't want any blue. <laughs> For sure this time, I'm going to doubly subtract it. Um, I mean, which seems like it kind of might work, right? Um, you no longer have like a two thirds thing. You have the one third that's green and then you it like gets so counteracted by the presence of the other color that it uh, it would outweigh it, it would outweigh the other one. Right. So th I, this seems like it should actually work, right? Okay, let's see. Let's see if we can look at V five. Um, boop, boop, boop. Okay, V five. Uh, Bunny is rated very highly for whatever reason. Notice. Okay, so I believe this is basically yellow. Yeah, this is red and green. Yeah. So this little yellow stripe is in fact V five. We're on V five, right? Um, is in fact really dark here. So we're not rating yellow very highly apparently. And man, look at all these clearly green emojis. This is amazing. This is like groundbreaking, right? Look at all this, it's insane. Like is this yellow corn on the cob? Yeah, see look, that's not, V4 we had this massive problem with yellow and basically all the other ones did too. V5 is the first one that figured out yellow. Figured out the yellow is not green. So V5, I think, is actually pretty great. And out of curiosity, I want to see if I can just like immediately find the part that was like, I need to go further or not. Oh yeah, this is, so we get cool stuff like this, right? Like, for some reason, I love that. It's like we can programmatically detect where the green is. 
and that's neat. V5 is good. V5 is good. Yeah, I think V5 is actually really good. Um, but maybe, like... Yeah. Maybe I thought it was, like, a bit... It still rated some of the yellow stuff a bit too highly. I think that was my feeling on this. It's like, oh, well, here's all these faces mixed in here. And, you know, that actually... It shouldn't be it shouldn't be rated green at all, right? Or like if it is green, just like a really minuscule amount. Um, so here's where the perfectionism comes in. I think it looks like V5 is actually perfectly serviceable, um, but it still scores yellow things too highly, and that's something I take issue with. And I'm sure there was one particular thing. Oh my God, melon. Ah, uh, melon is going to be a recurring feature of this, where it's, like, really hard to tell. <laughs> really hard to, to score it accurately. Um, all right. So, so V6 is now going to be an ex exercise in perfectionism. Uh, V5, let's look at the test image. Okay, the test image, uh, I mean, it looks pretty good. It looks like a pretty smooth transition. And this is like very gradual, right? It's pretty gradual. We're, we are seeing like blue and yellows here still. Uh, pretty similar. And then we get here. Okay, so this is a fact. This is a, an artifact of the fact that uh, if you look at the S5 part of this list, it goes down and down and down and down. And then, and then all of these colors have a score of zero. So they default to like whatever organization they had when when I was like generating them, you know. So it's not it's not no order at all. Um, but the order here doesn't really reflect anything about the score. Okay, but score five is really good. Score six, okay, totally different approach, right? I'm just like. Taking a guess out of nowhere, can we get anywhere if we do a different sort of method? And so here was my thinking. Okay. If you imagine that the space of all colors in the RGB space, if you imagine that actually they exist on a cube, which shouldn't be particularly difficult to imagine because, uh, because these are three dimensions, ignoring alpha. These are three dimensions going from 0 to 255. Okay, and 0, 0, 0, you make that the origin, which would be black. Um, so you just you just imagine it in the form of a cube, and, and one of these corners of the cube, whatever direction is the, the green direction, uh, that's pure green. Okay, so it's like a vector, I guess. Um, point or a vector, yeah, I, I, actually either way. Um, and you just now we're talking about okay well let's let's consider greenness as like whoever's closest to green on that cube is is uh is green is greener okay and uh this is like this is like a little bit similar to this concept except it's nonlinear. this is green minus two times red this is doing like uh we're doing a square root and we're multiplying red by itself. So it's like, it's, it's more complicated. Uh, and then the final distance score is 255 minus distance. Right, so, so distance, I'm calculating the distance from green and I want to do the opposite of distance. The closer to green, the better. So that's why I have to do this 255 thing. And then of course opacity ratio. So that's the idea with V6. It's a totally, it's very different from the other methods. Uh, let's see, let's see if it's any good. Okay, so we're gonna do resort V6. All right, here we are. Here we are with V6. 
honestly, uh, initial impressions, it's green, right? Like V1 through V4 couldn't even get a full set of uh, like an initial first page of green emojis. V6, these all are green. These all are decidedly green things. This thing, even though I would argue it looks a little bit yellow, is a green apple. Uh, V6 score. Yeah, and even the yellow part of it is considered not as green. Yep, V6. Yep. Uh, does it pass the yellow test? Uh, for the most part, yeah. For the most part, this yellow corn on the cob is not considered green. The yellow sun is like maybe a tiny bit green, which is not desirable, but still overall, still overall quite green. Just want to scroll through this a little bit to see if I, oh, well, here's like a little bit of an issue, right? So what's this doing here? V6. Okay. So V6. Oh yeah. And here's like the black circle and uh, the black checkbox. Yeah, so V6 seems to have this issue where um, yeah, so the score for V6 is 25, which is not very green, but it's still slightly green enough that these big, you know, mostly black images still get scored pretty, pretty highly up because they're not fully black, right? They're, they're this like, I guess like a dark brown or a dark purple maybe for this stuff. Um, it's hard to say. We don't have words for these colors. That's Microsoft for you, you know, really innovating there with the, with the new colors. So yeah, this, this still gets a decent amount of, of green points, even though it seems to kind of handle yellow okay. So it's, it's again, it's not perfect. Uh, I am curious to see the test image for V6, of course. Okay. What's crazy about this is this looks so much smoother than the previous test images. Um, which is kind of understandable because of like the smoothness of the, of the metric that we're doing here, right? With the square root, it's like a continuous thing. It's not discrete. And, um, but we still end up in this mode where it's like, ah, oh, there's a lot of these really dark pixels mixed in here. What are they doing here? The dark pixels and the yellow mixed in, but it's still like, if this was the judge, I, you would say that V6 is better than V5, I think. So like, you know, maybe there's something to this. Let's see if we can uh, modify V6 to, to be like a little bit better. So here's V7. What did I do with V7? Oh yeah, okay. So here's what I did with V7 is this extra part, which initially probably doesn't make any sense. The best way I can do, uh, I can understand it is, um, or the best way I can explain it is, um, imagine our greenness metric was the number zero to one. Um, the interesting feature about a number zero to one, when you square it, is that it, um, it may it basically makes all the values smaller, but it makes like uh, it makes the values that are less more smaller. <laughs> so if you imagine like uh, 0.1 on the greenest scale, if you square that, you get 0.01. So like it drastically reduced. Um, whereas 0.9, you square that, you get 0 0.81, 0 0.81, uh, and that reduced a bit but not as drastically as the reduction of 0.1. Okay, and, and again, it's a nonlinear thing. Um, so that's effect, That's basically what this is equivalent to, except it's not zero to one, it's zero to 255, it's, uh, same effect. 
So this is, I mean, this is kind of a lazy approach. I'm basically just saying like, I want the green things to be considered greener and the non-green things to be considered more non-greener. Uh, basically, can I punish um, the, the really dark colors that we saw there more? Can I reduce their score a bit? That's sort of what I was hoping. Like the, like the, slight, the very slightly green things, make them basically not green at all. So that's the idea of V7. Let's look at V6. Okay, and then resort V7. Okay. Off to a good start, right? Um, lots of green things here. The, the yellow on the corn on the cob is not green at all, whereas that was not the case with V6. So that seems like an improvement. Yep, this stuff is not green at all. So, so far, V7 is looking pretty good. Yep. What is this guy doing here? No. Large black square. <laughs> yeah, so I get, unfortunately, despite my best efforts, even something that's like five or six green, right? It's still significantly less green than V6, but even so, even with five or six greenness, because it's just all opaque and it's so big, it still gets a pretty high score. Um, yep, and then this guy's doing it here, here as well. Yeah, so, uh, so tragically, unless I just like keep squaring it again and again and again, um, and that would cause other problems, uh, this method of like the three dimensional distance things just seems like so, uh, limited. Like this, this large black square is like the Achilles heel of this method, it seems. Well, let's check out the test image. Okay. Again, quite smooth. Maybe we don't get the darker stuff as soon as before, but it's still, still a little bit iffy. I don't know. It seems really good in theory, but it's just, it's just, it's just got this issue, you know? Black is not green. Or whatever color this is, because it's not exactly black. Okay. So clearly we need to do something different. And I forget exactly what V8 is, but I believe V8 is something very different. What what was V8? Uh, yes. Okay. So the next three methods involve hue. All right. So hue... Oh, how do I, exp I'm not gonna really explain hue. I have this stack overflow thing, which has a nice picture. So I'm gonna use that. Okay. So I, I think a lot of people are somewhat familiar with the concept of hue. I'm scrolling on the, on the thing, okay. I think a lot of people are somewhat familiar with the concept of hue, um, but uh, like like if you've used a if you've used an image editor before, you probably have some notion of it. Um, you you might know that there's like different color spaces. Okay, so like RGB is one way to pick a color. There's also HSV or HSL hue saturation value hue saturation lightness there's all these different color spaces that give you different ways of picking colors basically it's, i mean that's that's the main value that i see in them and you can convert between those two color spaces but the the conversion is actually really kind of complicated uh and like mathy okay so here's the here's the code that i stole um 
and we're not really going to go over it because I, I don't even understand it that well. But let me scroll back up to we're going to we're going to look at V8. OK, but um, here's my here's what I, I think is the interesting takeaway. I want you to understand that hue is an angle. It's a number from zero to 360. OK, and remember I was talking about before how RGB is basically like you could represent it in three dimensional space. It's like a cube. So here's the imagery that they that they did for that. And I think it's very effective. Like here's here's zero zero zero, the origin of it, right? And each of the corners here are a uh, are one of red, green, and blue. Um, and then some of the other corners are like the combination. So I guess here, look, here's red, here's green, and then you combine red and green, you get a yellow in this corner, right? And then I guess blue is up here. And if you combine red, green, and blue, you get white in this corner. It's great. It's got all these nice features. Um, and in order to make sense of it is in terms of an angle, you do this thing where you flatten it into a hexagon. Okay, that's basically what they've done here. That's what they're talking about. It's like uh, what they, it's called projecting. They project the cube onto a hexagon so that now basically imagine you know you you pick a point in the middle of the hexagon and you're going to use that as your point of reference to define a bunch of angles okay so here's like here's like that point of reference and i didn't really mean to click on that here's that point of reference in the middle and um what is it i believe red is zero degrees yeah red is zero degrees and these are all equilateral triangles. So this is 60 degrees, 60 degrees, 60 degrees to go to each point. Yeah, hopefully that makes sense. And that's literally the hue component of hue saturation lightness or hue saturation value. Those are two different color spaces. I'm not using them interchangeably. I'm saying that they are, they're two examples of color spaces that both have hue. <laughs> um, and, uh, and green is, boop, boop, uh, 120 degrees. So if we, th this can give us a new concept of greenness. Now that, now we have sort of a, uh, this is like a one dimensional metric that you can use to understand greenness as it's like, what, what angle, what direction are you going here on this projected cube? Um, I, actually, you know, all of the values in this cube do have a hue, right? It's not like only these ones do. These are just the ones that get shown when you project it onto a um, onto a hexagon. There's like darkened versions of these that you're not seeing, right? Like where is black in this image? Clearly black has to be somewhere. You just don't see it. Um, so I guess they only show like the top three faces of the of the cube as they project it down. There's all these colors in here, and they all do have a hue. Um, but that's that's I, I, that's the conceptually interesting part that I got out of learning how to how to you know learning this bit. Okay, this little bit of research. Okay, so hopefully that gives you enough information to understand the the small details of what we're doing here so i say what is green now uh green is the distance from the hue green okay 120 is the hue we do uh, absolute value of the difference between the hue the actual hue of this point of this pixel we're calculating and the green hue Okay, the distance from green, the hue. Uh, and then what I do is um, smaller distance is better. And if your distance is more than 50 away, then you're not green at all. Okay, so greenness is like this very strict window. It's not a gradual fall off at all. It's just like all or nothing. Um, at, at a point, it's all or nothing. Actually, I'm lying. It is a gradual fall off because that's just, pff, pff, don't listen to me. Um, yeah, this would kind of look like a like a like a triangular thing. It's like linear. It's a linear fall off as you go away from the perfect green thing. Okay, so 
It's not a sudden drop off. Um, but I did arbitrarily decide that 50 was like the cutoff. And then I have to do this, this step to just like make it a number from zero to 255. So that's, that's this new concept. This is the first distance metric or greenness metric that uses hue. All right, so so we're at V8 and we're gonna resort V8. Okay, did we do it? I believe we did it. So, uh, great news, green things are considered green and not green things are not green so far it's slightly concerning that this like brown part of the tent is uh, is lighting up right uh how about this alien okay this is not green now this is not green so whatever this brown is i guess is green but the alien's eyes are not they're not green enough to be considered green they're more red i guess i don't know so do we see any problems with this method? All these things are green so far. Yeah, all these things are clearly pretty green. The order might be a little bit funny. Um, the eight. No, yeah, that's, that's pretty green. Yeah, no, no, yeah, that's pretty good. I find myself mostly agreeing with V8 currently. I forget exactly wherein lies the problem. I mean, that's a little bit weird, right? Those pixels don't look green. This guy. That's pretty good. Was it melon? Was melon the thing that I was like, hold on a second. Maybe it was melon. I saw melon and I was like, wait a minute. We have dragon is less green than melon. We have kiwi is less green than melon, right? That's probably what broke me, right? I Because I remember, I remember really hating the melon. And not all the other metrics had this issue with the melon. Yeah, so I was like, wait a minute. Why is the melon green? I can't live in a world where the melon is green. <laughs> mm. uh, and then we've got, we do have slight issues with like brown and, and stuff. Well, this is all pretty green. That's fine, I guess. Yeah, no, V8 is a little bit better than I remember. That's cool. Okay, uh, so I think, ooh, we have to see the test image for V8, obviously. Um, yeah, V8 might, might even be an improvement compared to V7. Although, not if you look at this image. Yeah, if you look at this image, uh, this looks like a disaster, right? Here's white and white just gets like a really high V8 rating. So that's an issue. That's a huge problem. Yeah. Um, so it seems to not be able to handle like lightness and darkness properly. If it's still in the direction. I mean, if you go back and look at this, right? This stuff in here could still be considered very green, even though it's like very white at a point. And likewise, you don't see the whole the whole picture here, but same thing with like in the dimension of darkness. Um, 
yeah, so definitely problems with, with the V8 method, but it seems to be pretty darn good. Especially, like, on average, if you just look across all the emojis, it's not bad. Okay. V9. Basically... I added the concept of lightness and saturation or something kind of like lightness and saturation. That's what I did. <laughs> um, so it's the same greenness metric as from before, but I multiplied it by a number zero to one to indicate to, uh, to reward. What am I rewarding? Max minus the min of this. Oh yeah, okay. So um, it's it can't be pure white, basically. Like if the min of all of these was two fifty five, and the max was two fifty five, you'd get zero. Okay, so it's it's uh, it can't be white and it can't be black either. It has to be some some direction away, some amount away from the exact middle, right? So that's sort of what this is trying to do. And this is kind of doing the same idea where it's like, it can't be a really desaturated color either. Yeah. I basically read the, the wiki and I picked out some metrics that seems to make sense and I just went with them. That's all I got for you. That's, that's as deep as it goes. Uh, so here's, let's, let, let's consider, let's resort for V9. Okay. V9, hey, we got, we got more green stuff here. Now V9, V8, V9, V8. I think just coincidentally this white was not considered green, but it's not super reliable. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, these are all definitely green. Uh, is, is yellow green? No, yellow is not, definitely not green. Pretty, pretty similar to V8, actually. Did we solve the melon problem? I guess that's the one random question. Kiwi's higher up, right? I haven't seen the melon yet. Kiwi's pretty high up. Worms pretty high up. This is a oh, it's a bug actually. Uh, this helmet, you know, which is like a very dark green, is still like decently green. Um, and then melons down here. Ah, but see, melon is still above dragon. Melon is still above dragon. God, I hope by the end of this, I I won't like realize that I hate V ten. But it's melon is less green than it was before. Uh, it's still, you know, it's still above dragon, which is concerning. Now I'm getting really nervous. Did I fix? Did I fix the melon greater than dragon problem? I don't know. Okay, so let's look at what I did for V10. Oh wait, before I forget, let's look at the test image. Did we fix the, the big problems we were seeing before in the test image? Yes. Yes, we evidently did. This looks infinitely better. This looks better than all the test images we've seen before, actually. And then here's all the things that are zero greens. Really good sign. <gasps> Sorry. I think that's a really good sign. And then what? where I decided to stop, and I forget if I actually solved the problem, but um, so here's what I did. All right, here's what I did. The problem with the dragon, let me go look, let me look, look at the dragon again. Okay, the problem with the dragon seems to be that it's actually, um, not really that green objectively 
which is to say that it's got a lot of blue in it. If you look at the RGB, it's got it's like 182 green to 1 140 150 blue. Um, and like directional if we're talking about hue, that moves it away from the pure green quite a bit. Uh, and that's probably why Dragon's getting downgraded so much as it's so far away from pure green. So I guess I what did I do? What did I do with greenness? Okay. Here's what I did is I said, yeah, okay. So these were still saying, um, once you get 50 degrees away from pure green, you get, you're at zero greenness. I stared at some at like a like a it, an HSV HSL color picker and just looked at looked at how far into the into each direction away from green that I could go and um, it turns out 50 was a pretty good guess but the the main change I made I guess uh, well one thing is what is this I believe this is in the direction of blue I decided I'm more tolerant of blue in my green than I am of red in my green. That's one thing. Not by much, but just a bit. And I also said if you're at the extreme edge of being not green, you're not zero green, you're 50% green. And then once you go outside that, hard cut off, 0% green. That's the main difference. Uh, chroma and value still doing the same thing. They get multiplied by the greenness. That's it, that's the trick. Um, so it's a slightly different cutoff whether you're going in the direction of blue or you're going in the direction of yellow, which is what this 52 and negative 45 are about. But the main concept is that it's at 50%. Uh, it, it, it gets less green, it gets, it's considered more green. The things that are within the cone are overall more green than they were before because they still, they haven't passed over the line to the not green side. That's sort of, um, cause that's sort of what I experienced when I was looking at the color pickers like, huh, it's sort of like suddenly becomes not green. It's not, it's not like a super gradual thing. It's like, oh, this is totally green and this is totally yellow. And there's like a really ambiguous spot in the middle, but most of the time it's pretty obvious. So yeah, o obvious, although obviously subjective to some extent. Okay, so we're at, so we're at V10. Here's the, uh, here's the final story. Uh, let's see, here we go, resort V10. I forget if I actually solved the problem with the dragon and the melon, but let's hope I did, because I seem to make a big deal out of it. Okay, so all these things are clearly green. We love to see it. That's a good sign. Uh, dinosaur, dinosaur. All these things are still green. Corn on the cob, the yellow is still not green. As you can see, some of the baseball goes into yellow, right? Unlike V9, well, it's kind of like V9 actually, but it's more of a sudden drop off here. In the aggregate though, even though it's a sudden drop off, it's still not that big of a deal because there's a lot of pixels to work with and they're all sort of changing gradually. Uh, the bug, the bug is actually pretty blue down here, right? And so we had to decide some cutoff where it's not green anymore. Still has a lot of green on it. Dragon, I, we haven't seen melon yet, right? We haven't seen melon yet. Yes, successfully we made, we decided dragon is greener than melon. That was very important. That was a very important victory. Hard one. And then here's the blasted melon. Uh, it turns out that the melon is still green and it's greener than this dragon, which is a bit hard to believe, but at the same time, 
The smellin is big. It's a very big emoji, right? Com sort of compared to the dragon. Um, and I, I guess the melon is just green. I think that's what I had to live with is like, you know, in other contexts, the slight yellowness is, um, is acceptable. And I just have to accept, I just have to sort of live with the fact that this is, uh, this is technically green, you know? Maybe if I wanted to make a V11, I could punish the like lack of saturation more harshly. Um, or I guess it would be like the chroma, right? I could make the chroma a more significant component of the score. Um, but I've, I've sort of made peace with it. I've, you know, I honestly don't want to just like keep working on the project forever. It's, it's really good. And, um, oh, and like the final thing. So, you know, this, this goes on and I don't believe there's any, any like big obvious, uh, issues. Like by the time we're down here, it's like very little, very tiny bits of green. And these zombies are like more blue, I guess, than actually green. So, um, I'm happy. I'm finally like mostly happy, but there's not any like massive problems that I can perceive at this time for, for V10. So that's why I decided to stop. And then finally the test image would honestly kind of drove home the point of, um, of like, this is actually significantly better than V9 is this test image. And I hope you'll agree. This is like really surprisingly smooth. Seeing this kind of blew me away because I, I didn't think it was possible to make something to like still have all the pixels there, but have it be so smooth a transition, perceptually speaking. From green to not green. Like, I think that that's pretty darn good. Yeah, I think that's pretty awesome. Obviously, I, I, I don't think that this can ever be a perfectly smooth transition because we have to, we have only, you know, one pixel. We, we, we have to have one pixel for every possible color. And, um, like, as you saw with this thing, you can, um, how to explain it? Basically, you're going to have pixels that are some distance from green in this direction, and then some distance from green in the other direction. And they're going to get scored equally, and so they're, they're going to appear next to each other, and actually their distance from each other is going to be quite large. And they're going to be stuck right next to each other. So this is sort of inevitably going to become more noisy and, and therefore kind of look less smooth, which is like unavoidable. I'm saying that aspect of it is unavoidable, but you could still probably find a way to make this look more perceptually smooth. Um, but it's not going to be me who does it. And, and with that, I will end my, my long presentation on the greenness of emojis. I hope you found it uh, enlightening in greenening. That's that's a reach. That's uh, that's I'm done. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.